Welcome to Dr. Beatty's Chemistry Essentials, A-Level Chemistry Made Easy. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at average bond enthalpies and calculating the overall enthalpy change given some bond enthalpy data. So here lies a compound. You can see that the atoms are joined together by bonds. Now these bonds are electrostatic forces of attraction. In this case, we have a covalent system. But the same principle would apply if we had an ionically bonded system with the electrostatic forces of attraction between the opposite charged ions. Now, as with anything, if there is a connection, you're going to need energy to break it. So if we take these reactants and broke the bonds to form the products, then we are left with the atoms on their own, not connected together. And these atoms can rearrange to form new products and those products will have a new type of covalent bond between them. And so it's unsurprising that we need energy to break these bonds and this energy is called the bond dissociation energy and it's the energy required to overcome the attraction between nuclei or ions if we're talking about ionic bonding. In order to quantify this, it is an enthalpy, so the units are kilojoules per mole. And in terms of how we use the data in terms of calculations, etc., we tend to use average bond enthalpies. These are the energy needed to break one mole of bonds in a gas phase, but it's averaged over many different compounds. So, for example, if you took the OH bond, which is ubiquitous in chemistry, the actual data value in literature is plus 463 kilojoules per mole. So that's telling us, on average, to break this OH bond here, this covalent bond, we require, for every mole of these bonds, 463 kilojoules per mole. However, in some OH bonds, it, we might need more energy than the 463, and for some bonds, we might need less energy than this. And so we have to be aware of the fact that we are taking averages over many different compounds. So depending on what compound we're looking at, we could get a calculated value that's different from this value given on the data sheets. Now, it's important that if you do get a different value to the average bond enthalpy in the literature, that you know that actually there's two reasons why that might be the case. So the first one is that bond enthalpies are given as averages for several different bonds and different compounds, as we already talked about. And secondly, when you've made an enthalpy calculation, then you may have made that enthalpy calculation when dealing with substances that are not actually in their standard states. So maybe you measure the enthalpy of a liquid when really it should be a gas because we know that our definition is the energy required to break one molar bond in the gas phase. So bond dissociation dissociation energy is the energy required to overcome the attraction between two particles. So it's basically telling you the energy required to break a bond. But also, energy is formed when we actually create a new bond. So we're just going to have a look at the energy changes in an enthalpy profile that happen when we convert reactants through to products. So if you take the reactants there at this energy level at the moment, then we are going to require energy. We're going to have to input energy in order to break those bonds. So here we've got our level of the energy required to put into the reactants to actually break these forces of attraction. And you can see this equates to the activation energy, the minimum amount of energy required for a successful collision. And so this overall process is endothermic because it's taking energy in. And then with these different reactant atoms now completely separate, we're in the highest energy state here. 
And then we're going to form new bonds to form the products. And the products could either be lower energy than reactants, which would obviously make it a exothermic reaction overall, or they could be higher than the reactants, and then it would be an endothermic reaction overall. We're going to just plot an exothermic reaction. And so going from these individual atoms to the products, we go downward. And so we release energy. As you can see, we're going from a higher to a lower energy. So if we're going down in the enthalpy, then that means the chemical energy is being reduced. But remember, we can't create or destroy any energy. So if we're reducing the chemical energy, we're increasing the thermal energy. There's been a transfer. And so that explains why we're increasing the thermal energy of the surroundings, even though we're decreasing on this enthalpy diagram. Lots of people can get their head around this quite easy because it makes sense that if you've got something connected together, you need to break the bonds. So we take in thermal energy in order to increase our chemical energy. And one way to remember these processes is Mexican bent. So making is exothermic, and then ben is the breaking is endothermic. So it's always the case that making bonds is exothermic and breaking bonds is endothermic. But when we're looking at the overall enthalpy change, i.e. the relationship of the reactants to the products, then what we are comparing is all the energy are required to break all the reactant bonds compared to all the energy released on making the product bonds. And this looks like the following equation. And so the energy absorbed or the energy of the reactants and to break them minus the energy released, i.e. the energy on forming the products. If we were to take this question here, where we're asked to work out the enthalpy change of combustion for methane, we would be given or been asked to construct a balanced symbol equation. And we would be given the average bond enthalpies for the different types of bonds that we would need in our reactants and our products undergoing combustion of methane. Now, unless you're incredibly skilled and can picture the bonds uh, in the structural formula without writing it down, I would recommend, especially first starting out, that you write the structural formula of all the chemicals in the equations for step one. And so here we're just going to show every bond in both the reactants and the products. So we're just converting the symbol equation. And just to note, obviously, with the two oxygen molecules here, I've drawn them out. I know that oxygen is double bonded, and these are some of the things that you expected to know at A level. Carbon dioxide looks like this, and we've got two moles of water. So step two, we're going to use our displayed structural formula in order to count the number of each type of bond that appears there. And so in the reactants, I've got some CH bonds. So we can see these up here in our bond enthalpy data. And I have some O double bond O's. Now, especially with more difficult chemical substances, every time you identify and use up a bond, I would just tick it off on here. So I've got four CH4s. So one, two, three, four. And... And we've got two O double bond O's. And I'll do the same process for the product side. So the first step is we're going to substitute in the bond enthalpy values. And so this is when we refer to our bond enthalpy data. So we know for each CH it's 412, etc. And now all that remains is we want to work out the overall energy required to break the reactants. So using all the sum of all of the values in the reactant column, 
And then, then we've got this term here. And then what we want to do is take away all the, the sum of all the values in the product column to form part of this. Do that sum, and then we'll be given our overall enthalpy change. So the reactant column works out to be 2640. Our product column to be 3338. Three, so then we've got reactants minus the products. And then this gives us an overall value of minus 698 kilojoules per mole. And this is sensible because all combustion reactions are exothermic, hence the negative overall enthalpy change when we've calculated this. So here's a typical exam question that uses average bond enthalpy data. I want you to pause the video here and have a go at this question, extracting the correct information from the question layout and working out both the term and also the calculation. Okay, so for the first question, what is meant by the term average bond enthalpy? The definition you're looking for in two parts is the average enthalpy change when one mole of bonds for one mark of gaseous covalent bonds is broken for the second mark. If for the second part of the question, you've got minus 42 kilojoules per mole, then you've got three out of three marks. So if we look at this, it's asking us to work out the enthalpy change of reaction, delta RH, of one mole of butan 2 o by method 1. So we're looking at this method here. So we know our reactant is this alkene, and so we're going to quickly just work out what bonds we've got in there. You'll notice that the CH3s are not a complete displayed formula so it'd be useful here to take the CH3s on our alkene and just draw them outright and so this makes it easier to see where our CHs are in the alkene reactant and you can see this method of ticking off means that then we know we're left with two lots of CC single bonds. If we do the same process for the product We've got our nine CHs there. We've got a CO bond here. And then here we've got an OH group. And so that is going to be an OH bond. And then we use the data table in order to substitute in the correct values. This works out to give us a sum of all the reactants and the bonds broken to be 5,538. And the sum of the energy of the bonds made and the products is 5,580. Then all that remains is remembering our equation. Just summarised R for reactants here, P for products. Put in these two values. So reactants 5538 minus the 5580. And that comes out to be minus 42. Okay, this is a slightly different type of exam question. Um, I'm going to get you to pause the video here, have a go at it using principles that we've looked at so far, and see if you can get the average bond enthalpy of the C double bond C bond in this question. Okay, so if your answer was plus 612, kilojoules per mole, then you've got the correct approach in order to do this. If you didn't get that, don't worry, we're going to go through it step by step right now. So first up, we've been given a symbol equation here. So we're going to construct that into a structural formula because it's going to help us work out what bonds we've got in our reactants and our products. And then what we need to do is basically systematically work through all our products and all our reactants to the ones uh, that we know, the information that we know here. So we've been given every type of bond, obviously except for the C double bond C bond that appears in this ethene molecule here.
And so at this point, obviously we've looked at every bond. We know that the reactants also contains a single one cc bond, so, but we're going to account for that after we've calculated the sum of the oxygens and the CHs. That works out to be 3,146. Um, we're going to let the C double bond C bond be X just because it's easy. So we know we need to add an X to this 3,146 to get the sum of all of our reactants energies. What we know is our equation is the enthalpy change is the sum of all the reactants minus the sum of all the product bonds. Um, we've been given this enthalpy change up here as minus 1318. Our reactants, the sum of the reactants is all of this and the sum of our products is all of this. So between all of this information, we can rearrange it to get x. So if we just substitute in these values into our equation, we've got 3146 plus x, and then we put a minus because our equation tells us we've got a minus, and we just put in the 5076. Then what we want to do is rearrange this to get x, so we're going to leave x on the right hand side of this equation just to make it really easy to follow. So x is going to be there. We've got a minus 1318 that is already on the left hand side of the equation. I'm going to try and isolate x on its own. So I'm going to move this 3146 across the equal sign. So if it was positive beforehand, as it goes across, it's going to change signage to be minus 3,146 and finally we've got our minus 5,076 and as that goes over the equal sign it becomes positive so we're going to have positive 5,076 put that all into the calculator we get to be 612 and it's a positive value because all average bond enthalpies are positive they obviously require energy in order to break the CC bond. Okay, so this has been average bond enthalpies and calculating the overall enthalpy change using their data. I hope you found it useful. If so, please like the video and ensure that you subscribe for more tutorial lessons on A-level chemistry essentials.